This video is an introduction to the Paperclip DNA Assembly Protocol. Paperclip was introduced uh, to iGEM by the Edinburgh team in 2014. It's an alternative to other assembly protocols uh, like Gibson, which is used by a number of teams, including the U of T team. A couple of different ways to do Gibson. One of them is simple, but unfortunately expensive. The other way to do Gibson is cheap, but it's somewhat time consuming and complex. So paperclip assembly promises to be both simple and cheap. Well, that's why I thought it was worth uh, taking a closer look at. So let's do an example uh, of a paperclip assembly. We want to build a plasmid. Let's say we want to build it out of four, pla uh, four parts. We'll have our backbone with our origin of replication, our antibody gene, or antibody, antibiotic resistance gene, rather. Um, let's put in a light-activated genetic switch. Let's put in cure for cancer and our GFP reporter gene. To this mix, we add clips, which are short pieces of DNA that consist of the last 40 or so bases of one part and the first 40 or so bases of the next part. We do that for each junction that we want to build. In this case, we have four junctions that we want to create in order to build this circle. The last one, the last 40 bases or so of the GFP protein, the first 40 or so bases of the backbone. And then, on this mix, we run a PCR reaction, slightly modified version of CPR, uh, PCR called CPEC. Uh, same reagents, same, en same enzymes, just slightly different uh, times and temperatures, and that's all detailed in the paper. So what happens during a PCR reaction, first we go up to the melting temperature, and our double-stranded DNA melts into single-stranded DNA. That also happens with our clips. The second step of PCR reaction, we go back down to the annealing temperature. That will allow some of our clips to anneal to the corresponding strands, complementary strands on the corresponding parts. And in some cases, we will end up with a full circular plasmid. In the last part of the uh, PCR process, the polymerase enzyme, will see these clips as primers and use them as a starting point to create the double-stranded DNA. And when that process finishes, we'll end up with a whole bunch of plasmids that are ready to be transformed into E. coli. Now, the authors of the paperclip paper suggested, they didn't try this experiment, and I think it would be an interesting one to try, that it should be possible to use the paperclip parts with the Gibson assembly protocol. And we'll do this with, uh, with one part and one clip. Then we can imagine the rest of it uh, from there. In Gibson mix, there's a, there are three enzymes at work. One of them is an exonuclease. It chews back one of the two strands. It works fairly slowly. It's a leisurely enzyme. And when uh, the strands are chewed back far enough, the complementary basis from our clip and from the, the part are able to anneal together. When that happens, the second enzyme comes into play, which is a polymerase, just like in our PCR reaction. It uses the clip as a primer, and it works fairly quickly. Fills in the, the missing nucleotides, kicks the slow-moving exonuclease off so that no more uh, parts get, or sorry, no more nucleotides get removed by the exonuclease. The final 
uh, enzyme in the mix is a DNA ligase, which just fills in any mix. So if that happens with all four parts, once again, we will end up with our circular double-stranded plasmid which is ready to be transformed into E. coli. Now the folks at Edinburgh took it one step further. Instead of ordering full clips, uh, they ordered half clips. And that gave them uh, some advantages in terms of being able to very easily swap parts in and out, change the order of parts. It also gave them PC, uh, primers for uh, PCR reactions to, uh, to isolate genes, uh, either from the standard IgM kit uh, or from nature, if you wanted to add a part that wasn't in the iGEM, uh, wasn't available from iGEM. So uh, that added a bit of complexity to the procedure, but it also added a huge amount of flexibility for them. So that is the paperclip assembly protocol in a nutshell. If you want to read more about it, the paper is available here. It's an open access paper. If you uh, Google for paperclip and DNA assembly, it's very easy to find. And I hope you do that.